how to choose your niche in business. Guys, Kim Barrett here today, coming at you from the Your Social Voice offices with a special guest, Ken Belowfield. So in a moment, I'm gonna talk with Ken about how he's gone about choosing a niche for his business and how you should do it too. But one of the most important things that I've been talking to people about the last couple of days keeps coming up is that they think when you have a niche, it means that that's the only person that you can work with. You can't work with anyone else. And it's just not true. The reason why you choose a niche in business is because you want to be able to identify who you can work with, who you have fun working with, and who's going to be most profitable for you. But also, it's for campaigns, it's for referrals. That's why you choose a niche. Because some people go, oh, but if I choose uh, women who are 30 to 40, I can't work with 20 year olds and I can't work with 50 year olds. No, you can still do that. But it's about identifying for a campaign and for your business who your ideal person is. Because if you do that properly, then it allows your campaigns going forward to be on point. It allows for people to go, oh, go and work with Ken because he works with these people specifically, rather than having to go, oh, who is it that they work with? Oh, they work with everyone. Because if you work with everyone, you may as well work with no one. It's going to be very, very hard for you to be able to get people to refer you, to be able to run effective ad campaigns if you're trying to work with everyone. Versus if you have a specific objective of who you want to work with, then everything else becomes easy. Now, Ken, you've been going through this probably conundrum for the last couple, well, probably a couple months, right? Yeah, a couple months, yeah. Yeah, so when you first came to us, um, Ken is, uh, he helps us out with a few things here in the office. He also runs his own business, um, helping people with their fitness and health. Now, when you first came to us, who did you want to work with? Who was your niche? Oh, boy, geez. I don't know. I mean, my niche was really, really big, so I kind of just dripped and drabbed in everything. Um, it was, you know, I've, I've dealt with junior athletes, I've dealt with um, geriatric patients, so my niche was kind of all across the board. I didn't everyone. really know. It was just everyone. That's it. it was everyone and anyone. And the problem with that is it was hard to attract, I was hard to run my ads on targeting all these different types of subpopulations. Like, how do I kind of do that? So um, I think we came here, we had a bit of a chat, and I was like, look, Kim, I need to choose a niche, we need to go down and, and I suppose really kind of knit through this rabbit hole and find out exactly what I want to do, what I want to do mm. and who I want to target. Um, so it was really everyone when we got started, but um, now that we've kind of talked through it, um, I think we've kind of narrowed in a, on a little bit more of a niche. Well, now. you've narrowed it, but then you've also told me the other day that you've narrowed it again. So you want to share a little bit, you said you've been doing some work with your partner on who it is you want to work with. Tell me a little bit about who you've kind of identified and then we can kind of workshop that a little bit for people watching so they can make sure that they're on the right track with their niche too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. So um, when, when we first started, uh, when we first came to the idea of a niche, we looked at people potentially 45 to 55 years old. And that was that 10 year um, age gap there that we, we kind of look at, I suppose, in the mogul system, trying to narrow down that, that 10 year age gap to really specify or, or, or be really specific with your ads. Um, we were getting a few ads in, the leads were coming through, sorry, we were getting a few leads in, the leads were coming through, um, but then what I was offering probably wasn't appropriate. Although my, my ads were good, the leads were good, the offer that I was offering those individuals who were in that age bracket probably wasn't specific enough. So uh, we went back, we had a little bit of a brainstorm, my partner and I, and we thought, you know, what would be the best kind of, um, to, I suppose, subpopulation or age group to give them the offer that we're, we're offering. So we changed our, our age bracket to 10 years earlier, to 35 to 45. Um, and then we changed it again to 35 to 45, but with now specifying just females. Um, so we're just narrowing, narrowing, narrowing. And then we looked at individuals, I suppose, uh, in the more affluent areas um, in a way. So individuals who could actually afford the services that we're providing as opposed to individuals who couldn't. Yeah. So you can see it's, it's, a, it's a process, guys, and people always go through it and it gets more narrow. Now, I would say we're probably not there just yet, right? Because targeting affluent people, everyone wants people that have money, right? That's pretty good across the board. It's like, yes, of course. I'll take it for anyone watching you in Perth. I'll take everyone that lives in Dalkeith, Peppermint Grove and Cottesloe. Thank you very much, right? But that is not um, as niche as we really would want to go. So I'll give you an example. So for example, we had a client who was working with um, people who wanted to work with guys who had money. So it was targeting a very broad range. And it was targeting kind of like from uh, 30 to 50. 
and he said, cool, I want to work with guys only, 30 to 50, that have money to so they can pay for my programs so that I can help them get results physically and what they're looking for. Now, what he decided to do is go, well, what subsection of that, what type of guys have that sort of money to, ex to spend? There's business owners, there's people that do FIFO, there are people that maybe are um, high end corporate executives and a couple of different opportunities there. So he decided to niche into FIFO workers and he wanted to have the FIFO workers with their health and fitness specifically because he knows that number one, they do have and um, will have a, a good disposable income. They have a problem because they go back and forward. They have problems with their routine and choosing what to have on site because we talked about this the other day, they've got a buffet, right? For lack of better words, they've got a, um, their mess and it's every, everything you can want and as much, not well, like within realm, as much as you can have. So it's very hard for them to go, cool, how do you choose your portion sizes? How do you choose when you have everything in front of you, what you should be taking, what you should be having, what you should be consuming? Like, it's just when you go to the shops and you're hungry, you come out and you've got a packet of Skittles, um, a Coke, and you've got a uh, avocado, and you didn't go in there for any of that, but you're hungry, like, I'll grab these things. You go home and like, okay, I actually can't make anything with this, right? It's gonna be disgusting, my avocado, mashed with Skittles, a little bit of Coke on top. Um, Nita, who's filming this, is like, yeah, it's my perfect dinner, right? That's what she does. Hits <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> all the food groups. But so, if you were to be even more specific with that, those 35 to 45 year old women who are who have the ability to invest with you, what would you say is like, what type of job are they in? What sort of woman are they? Do they have? Are they a parent or are they a career oriented person? Like, what would you what would you say? Well, look, we want I want women with time. Uh, who aren't time poor because obviously the more time that you can put into your health and fitness, uh, the better results you're going to get. Obviously, you can get awesome results with people who are time poor too. Uh, but if we're, what I'm offering is obviously an educational package as well. So with that, they need to have time to invest into it as well. So I primarily want women who are either um, stay-at-home mums potentially or are um, not working because they're either retired or they are they have. A partner who is making enough income so they don't have to work or they they're working part-time so that's kind of where I'm going with that so they're either part-time they're either um, not working because of they have good financial income coming in from their spouse or whatever um, or they're a stay-at-home stay mum. yeah so guys one of the interesting ones around this right is if you're looking at that that's probably going to actually be a bad niche right potentially only because I know what Ken does because if you think about it yes you want them to have time however if all of their alliance is on someone else, that's a very hard sales conversation to have when every single person that you speak to has to speak to their partner because maybe they don't have the exact disposable income that they can just go, yeah, cool, I'm gonna drop one, two, three, five, seven thousand, whatever the package might be, I'm gonna just drop this amount of money right now. It has to be a decision because they are maybe not a, a sole breadwinner, um, it's a family, they've got kids as well, which also means that there's going to be an increase in the cost if you've got kids, they're like, oh, but you know, that's how much Timmy's uh, baseball lessons are. Oh, should I really do that for myself? Because it's hard for a mum sometimes to be selfless and take themselves into consideration rather than if they've got a family. Now, this is only things that I've learned after years and years and years of doing these types of things and identifying. And I would probably say, well, to Ken, you know, I would be maybe thinking about those ladies that are time poor right? Because they have a corporate job. Like I can think of a few people in my head that are in that age bracket that don't focus on their health and health and fitness that could be educated. However, maybe you would have to adjust the offering and positioning to them so that it's easy, bite-sized, consumable. Maybe it's three minute videos they watch on the train on the way to work. They go work in the city, they work in the high rises. They pull in 100, maybe 250, 200K a year they're up and down the terrace. They're corporates, they're um, working in mining companies, whatever it might be. And they let themselves go a little bit as they've got older because work gets busier drinks are happening i need to go out but you know how can i have a lifestyle how can i get healthier but how can i still go out and enjoy all the social aspects which is something that we know ken does quite well he's still happy to go out and be social and uh, uh enjoy a few drinks and he knows the different strategies to use for that so what do you think about hearing that that's crazy that's because that's exactly what my educational platform kind of runs through how to obviously, you know, still have a lifestyle uh, or a life that you want to kind of live with your friends, with your family and those type of things. Go have drinks every on occasion, go eat out to dinners at restaurants and cafes and bars and whatnot and still be healthy and fit. Uh, and obviously how to have, you know, bite-sized chunks of fitness activities as well because obviously we know how important exercise is for your health. But it doesn't necessarily have to be 
every day extensively like we are in the gym for you know an hour and a half two hours something that meant to be that it could be a bite-sized chunk every here and there yes you can break it down over a period of seven days or you can break it down to three sessions a week or whatever you need to do to try and fit into your lifestyle but um it's crazy that you said it like that because that's exactly what I'm trying to focus on and, and how to stay um, healthy, fit and strong, but obviously still living the lifestyle or still living a very similar lifestyle that you're already living. Of course, there are things that need to change for most people, yeah. uh, but some things it's just either changing or increasing a little bit of this or decreasing a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah, so it could come down to the choices because as well, if you think about where your partner works, there's probably several ideal people that would be in that building that would potentially be interested in that and things because I think most of the time people think it's all or nothing it's like cool I, if I'm going to start a health regime if I want to like reclaim and reinvigorate my body I've got to cut everything out I've got to go to the gym every single day um, and I'm going to be no fun to be around because I just want a uh, lettuce leaf and a glass of soda water thanks where it doesn't have to be like that right and that's what Ken focuses on in his program so if you think about who is most ideal for that and who also has the disposable income is going to be ladies that are probably, you know, I make my own money, I do my own thing. Maybe they are single and in that bracket and who knows, they might be looking for a partner or have one, but they have their own disposable income and they go, cool, yes, I know that I go out and we have the corporate events and I've got to be able to um, uh, hang out with everyone and do that. I don't want to say no to these events, but also I want to make sure I make the right health choices. I think that if you hone in on that niche and you look at positioning yourself for a corporate woman, I'm going to put corporate in inverted commas, 35 to 45, who is getting a little bit older. So, you know, she can't just eat Krispy Kremes all weekend and wake up with uh, still a washboard stomach on a Monday, right? The old uh, metabolism and hormones and stuff kick in. That is something I think that could be addressed very easily for that niche and what um, what Ken teaches. And you'll be able to get some good results for them. But also they have the cash flow. They have the ability to make those decisions too and go, this is what I want. Um, for my life, I'm going to do it regardless of if I have to check with my partner or not. And to me, I think that's a much better um, targeting point because sometimes, you know, you can get the most ideal person. So you may as like, especially when it comes to Facebook ads, Instagram ads. So why not just choose them from the very beginning? Right? Because then sometimes it's like they tick certain boxes and you can see how with Ken thinking about the people that have time and whatnot, but actually his program is broken down for people that really probably don't have time that are out doing a lot of things um, and they have that cash flow, they have that disposable income, it then completely shifts and now it's easy for Ken to go, great, I help corporate women maintain and live a lifestyle that they love whilst also getting healthy in their body. Boom, simple, nice and easy. Who does Ken work with? Who works with corporate ladies that want to maintain their body and lifestyle and do what they love? Oh, great, I know six people like that. Let me send them to Ken. When you see an ad, it's like you're a corporate woman, you still want to have drinks on Friday, you still like to enjoy you know, the cheeky uh, burgers or maybe it's a twister wrap, whatever it is for you, right, on the weekends and still be able to get and improve your health and fitness. Great, click this ad and let's have a chat, right? It all then comes nicely packaged up and that's how you can identify a niche. now. There may be some more refinement to that. There may be some adjustments to that over time. But if you do that, you can see it becomes easy for you to send referrals to people, easy to run ads to. And then the offering is like, great, you're time poor? Cool, my videos are three minutes. Watch it in the car before you get out on the way to work or watch it on the train on the way to work, whatever it might be. Watch out the traffic lights. It's a, you don't watch out the traffic lights. <laughs> if you're driving a car, if you're a passenger, yes, by all means, right? So it becomes a lot easier. So does that make, that make sense for you? 100%. Yeah. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you liked it, give us a little thumbs up, like it and comment down below if there's anything else you want to see. Uh, if you're a corporate lady, comment down below and uh, Ken will reach out to you. Yeah, let's get started. Yeah. Um, otherwise guys, please, as always, subscribe so you get to see the content first before anyone else. Until next time, y'all been awesome. I'm Kim Barrett. He's Ken. Adios.